for this exercise, you'll notice that I have mounting stone over the sides of my cast. Uh, clinically, you never want to have that um, happening. Uh, you want to make sure that your mounting stone ends at the base of the cast. We've just tidied that up for appearances for the for this particular video. The other thing to uh, note is that you should always keep your incisal pin um, seated against the incisal table. Uh, but for this video, um, so that you can see a little bit easier, I'm going to remove that. Before we begin setting teeth, you should make sure that your rims are adjusted properly. There should be about one and a half to two millimeters of overjet between the lower or the mandibular rim and the maxillary rim. If you can take a look in the posterior region here, you can see I'm almost edge to edge and we'll make some adjustments there as well. The other thing to watch out for is that for this exercise, the laboratory technicians in our lab have set the teeth on the opposite side and they're close to where they want to be, but you should also check those and make sure there you've got the proper amount of overjet and overbite. Here you can see we've got a little bit of excess on the lateral and a little bit of insufficient overjet on the central. We want to correct those before we start setting the opposite side so that we can set those in harmony. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is probably adjust um, the wax rims over here and make a little adjustment uh, to my overbite on this side over here. Remember that for a lingualized occlusion we're looking for approximately zero, to zero um, millimeters of overjet. Um, remember that the lateral incisor, the incisal edge should be up about half a millimeter above the edge of the uh, ma maxillary uh, incisal edge and that the canine should be approximately at the same level as the central incisor. Over on this side over here uh, in the first quadrant, we don't have enough over jet, so I'm going to actually just take a piece of softened base plate wax. That's uh, actually two pieces here, and I've just softened that really uh, soft there. And I'm going to adapt that to my rim, take a look from the underside to make sure that I'm getting approximately the amount of uh, over jet that I'm looking for, and blend that in to the rest of the rim there. And then I'll use some heated instruments to smooth that out. Before you add wax to any particular rim, one of the things you want to check is to make sure that you're close to having the rims where you want. In this particular case, you can see in the mandibular rim that I've got the center of the, the ridge, if I'm looking at my reference lines here, they're running pretty much where I want them to be. I want the central um, or the maxillary lingual cusp are along the center of this ridge here are my li reference lines uh, on the cast and I've drawn a line on my wax rim. So that one's maybe a little bit buckle um, to the ridge, but I certainly wouldn't want to build this one out any further. Therefore, in the maxillary arch, that's why I've added that wax um, to the upper rim. Where I've added that wax to the maxillary rim, I'm going to just take my wax forming instrument, I'll heat it up uh, on my uh, Bunsen burner or my uh, butane torch. If you've got a Hano torch, it won't be quite uh, hot enough to do that. You want to try and get that nice and smooth and even and blending with the, um, the rest of the rim. You can use, with your wax for me, you can use a little bit of the wax that drips off the end of it. Make sure that you have uh, your instruments hot enough that it causes the uh, wax to uh, become molten and then you can smooth that off so that you have a nice even and smooth wax rim. This particular rim could be angled a little bit more out, could be a little bit more proclined um, and in the area here where I've got some seams make sure you, that you seal those down uh, because as you start to cut into the wax you'll find that those parts uh, come apart. You can also take your torch and just sort of smooth things off and blend it with the rest of the wax that you have there. We said that I didn't have quite enough uh, overjet on the central incisor, so I'm going to increase the overjet there now just by softening the wax all the way around the central incisor. And you can see that as I'm using my instrument, um, the wax is becoming molten and I'm going out underneath the tooth there so that the, I've got it good and softened so I'll be able to move that tooth the way that I want. I'll also soften it a little bit on the lingual surface so that I'll be able to move it buccolingually very easily. Now I'm going to just use a little pressure. I'm going to move the tooth out there a little bit, put it back on my rim, 
check it um, against the rest of the teeth here and I'm looking to make sure that my overjet is even between my central incisors and my lateral incisors and that's looking a little bit more even to me now that I'm looking there. We'll proceed then to start setting the, the uh, maxillary anterior teeth on the opposite side.